Hello, I'm Debbie from acrylicpouring.com and today I'm back for a record pour. But this time, instead of putting it on my uh, spinny machine and turning it round, I'm just going to pour on the record itself. And the reason I'm using a record today is because I'm going to try Rita's tree ring or swirl technique. It's been around for a while and I've just kind of been putting it off. It's been a bit controversial. I know there's been a lot of arguing backwards and forwards about it, so I've tried to stay out of all of that. But hopefully now things have calmed down down by the time I um, post this video and I am going to do um, my own. I've also been a little bit nervous because everyone's that I've seen has looked so darned awesome um, and I want mine to look good too obviously. So I have got oh well that wasn't a good start. I've got a jug today because I'm thinking it's got a, um, a spout on it, a little lip, and that maybe will make it easier for me. So I don't know, it's the first time I've tried, so let's see. In terms of my colours, oh, I'm making myself all messy. I have got, let's show you the bottles, um, the gold, then I've got a burnt sienna and a burnt umber and I have used a titanium white with just one or two little drops of the yellow ochre in it so that it turns into like um, a light cream colour because what I want is I want it to actually look as far as possible maybe a, even a little bit like tree rings so I thought if I go for kind of natural brown tree type colours then maybe it will look cool I don't know we will see so um, what I would ideally like is for the darker brown to be on the outside. So I'm going to put that one in my cup last because I want it to pour out first. And then this one with the gold and the cream. So I know normally people say use three colours, but I can't resist throwing a, a metallic in there. So I've got to have a gold. So we will see what happens. So I think cream is going to go in my cup first of all. Now I know that um, from what I've seen, it looks cool when you stretch this out. So you can pour it and that's great, but the more you stretch it, the more the rings separate and the more emph uh, emphasis you get on the effect. So I am going to try and use a minimal amount of paint and then stretch it out if I can. So I think, can you see this from the surface? Yes, you can there. So I've got a little bit of cream in the bottom and then I'm gonna put my gold carefully in here on one side. Now my paints are um, mixed just paint uh, with 50% Floetrol added and then a little bit of water and none of them have got any silicone in today because I think it looks better without cells but maybe I'll change my mind on that and do another one one day, we will see. So I've added the two colours in there kind of separately like that I um, wonder whether I should know. I don't need to put any more cream. So maybe just a bit of gold inside that brown. And then a bit of brown inside that gold. Like that. And then my darker brown over the top. Just kind of, if I can pour it gently over the top so that hopefully it comes out sort of first and makes the darker ring on the outside that I'm looking for. So I don't know whether I've got enough paint. Uh, we will see. So let's, do I need to give it, I'm gonna give it a little swirl around. That may or may not have been a good idea. And then hopefully the spout here is gonna help me pour in little circles and the darker paint comes out first. So let's see how it goes. I'm gonna try and keep it kind of fairly centered so that hopefully as I do it, oh look, I'm just getting loads of dark brown. Oh my goodness. Come on other colors, save me here from a total dark brown disaster. Okay, I'm getting some other colors, that's good. So I'm not very steady. Since I have my stroke, my right side was affected and uh, I'm not very good at kind of detailed stuff like this. So I'm gonna keep going. Oh, it's awfully brown. I think I'm gonna have to do this again. Oh, I'm getting a little bit more cream. That's good. A bit of cream and gold are coming out. But I'm not very good at making a very good swirl. So I think the jug is helping me a bit with that. I'm a bit off center. Let's keep going, keep going, keep going. Because I want lots of the lighter color now because I ended up with far too much of that dark brown. 
Come on, paint a bit more. Oh, now I'm not swirling properly in the middle. Now I've made a big mess. Okay, so it's very brown. <laughs> very, very brown. Um, I haven't got as much of the gold in the cream as I would like. Anyway, I am going to tilt this now and see if we can stretch it out. And as we do so, the lines hopefully will get more emphasised. And maybe I can pour a lot more of that brown off the edge. Now, you know what I forgot to do? I was supposed to put a base down, wasn't I? To pour on and help the paint move more. And I entirely forgot to do that. So that's completely my own fault. And of course you can see now that, oh, oh, well that didn't help. I just stuck my finger in it too. I was just pointing to the center, showing what a mess it was. And then I stuck my finger in and made it even worse. Okay. It's one of those days, I think. And yeah, I'm struggling to stretch it out a little bit because I forgot that I had to put the base down first. So I think I'm going to move those cups out of the way and see what I can do to stretch this out. It's certainly losing a bit more of that brown now, so it looks a bit better. Maybe I can pretend that that bit in the centre is a knot hole and not my finger or where I was kind of not very steady with it. I thought the jug might help, and I think it probably did, but unfortunately my hand just isn't um, steady enough. But it looks pretty cool. It's going slow because I didn't put that base layer down to help it move. But I think, I think it's going to be okay. Can you see there? I haven't got my lights on. That hasn't helped either, but it's nice and bright out today. Come on, stretch out a bit more for me paints. So I'm going a bit off centre and I, yeah, I should have put that base layer down. That would have helped. So I'm having to tip it quite drastically now to get it to cover. And hopefully I'll be able to bring it back towards the centre. So as I do that, you can see, you know, I've pretty much got it almost upright now. But it looks pretty good. It's going to cover, I think. Yeah got the edges there we go okay so there we are let's have a look from the top I put my glasses on so we can see it a bit better so I've ended up with a few cells popping through which is always a bit unfortunate I didn't want cells today but that kind of happens sometimes with your paints and it's not in the center anymore but do I like it as it is now of course I've got this messed up bit. there's not much I'm going to be able to do to save it so I think I'm just going to stretch this out because this section here with these stripes I really really like this bit so I'm going to try and stretch it out a little bit more and of course it's the paint is very very shiny you can see a lot of glare from the window I'm, I'm recording next to the window today because it's so darn hot here right now I think stretching it out a bit more is going to be cool it brings it back a bit more in the center although I don't necessarily need for it to be completely in the center but look you can see how how vertical I'm holding this to try and stretch the paints out okay let's bring my cups back in pop that down can you see in the top there we go so oh I've got a little blob I think that has been pretty successful. When I first poured it out, it looked awfully, awfully brown and awfully dark. But as I've stretched it, exactly as I thought, the more you stretch this, I think the more it really emphasizes the, um, the grain. And because of the colors I've used, it does look very much like a, a wood grain now, emphasized obviously by the fact that it's round and on a record. So although, you know, I wasn't that steady and I've kind of messed up in the middle and it's not, you know, it's not perfect. I'm still really, really pleased with it. Um, and so thanks Rita for showing us this technique. Um, it is one that I'd tried years ago because I used to be a, a soap maker long, long time ago. I used to have an Etsy store, sell soaps, body products and all that kind of thing. And we used to do something very similar with um, soap. And as soon as I saw Rita doing it, I thought, oh my God, why have I not thought about that? So there it is. It looks very much like tree rings. It's good. I am going to dry this off, varnish it and show you what it looks like when it's finished. So here it is finished, glossed, ready to go off to a new home and be listed in my Etsy store sometime soon. And I have to say I'm really pleased with it. Although it's not absolutely perfect, if we look, 
in the centre. I kind of messed up a little bit there. It's not perfect in the middle there and I've got a few little spots here where the cells have popped through but I think because of the natural colours in this the way it really does look like wood and you can see all of the the rings in it it looks really good and I'm really really happy with it. So I think I'll definitely try this technique again um, see if I can get less cells and more rings and uh, check out soon for another one coming in some different colours. Thanks for watching.